the National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, room 114. It is 4.47 p.m. the afternoon of October 29, 1927. Liz Ferris, a chambermaid at the Hotel Alamo in the town of Limpia, Texas, approaches Sam Bixby, the desk clerk. Mr. Bixby. Hmm? Oh, Liz, thought you went home. I uh, can't see as I'll ever get home till I get the rooms finished. And I still ain't been in room 114. 114? Hmm? That's Mr. Boland's room. Oh, he went out a couple hours ago. Well, he left one of them do-not-disturb cards on his door just the same. His key ain't in the box there. I looked before while you were sorting out the mail. Well, he probably just forgot to leave his key. You got your pass key, you can get in. Well, how'd you know he didn't come back again without you seeing him? Suppose he's in there taking a bath. (laughs) All right, Liz, all right. Come on. I'll come back with you. Give me the keys. Uh Some folks don't care at all when I finish work, long as they can sleep the day away. Now, Liz, Mr. Boland's been here for two days, and this is the first time he's given you any trouble. Well, if it ain't him, it's somebody else. There, there's that do-not-disturb card on the door, like I said. Did you try knocking? Not on the door? Of course I didn't. I got some consideration for other folks, even if they ain't got none for me. Besides, I run the vacuum clean in the hall hard enough to wake the dead. Well, he don't answer the knock. Sure he went out. Well, if you're so sure, why don't you open the door then? You, uh... You in, Mr. Bolin? Mr. Bolin? He's out all right. Go ahead, Liz. All right, I'll make the bed first, then get the vet. Ah! Hey, what's the matter? A man's leg sticking out from under the bed, and, and there's blood on the rug. Let me out of here. No, 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 be quiet, Liz. Don't let the other guests hear you. I better call the sheriff right away. Sheriff James Kerfus reached the murder scene and immediately sent out a request for assistance from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to investigate. He joined the sheriff in room 114 of the Alamo Hotel. Everything just like I found it, Ranger, except when I had the bed moved so as I could get a look at the body. Throat slashed, huh? Looks like it was done with a straight-edge razor, Sheriff. Yeah. A uh, weapon ain't around any place, though. That's what made me figure it was murder for sure. I could have figured that out even if the razor was around. Hmm? Huh? Palms of his hands are cut, too. He tried to grab the razor and get it away from whoever killed him. Oh, I see. We better cover him with this sheet. Austin will have a fingerprint man here soon. You know who he is? The name on the register is Henry Boland. Been here two days. Come up from Lone Star to sell some cattle at the auction barn. All the way up here from Lone Star to auction cattle? That's pretty far. Yeah, now that you mention it, is. Yeah, plenty far. Who discovered the body? A desk clerk and cleaning woman. You must have passed him out in the hall. I told him to wait right outside. Yeah, I saw him. We better talk to him. Right. Just trying to clean oh, the me. Huh? Liz, Range wants to talk to Oh, you. sure thing. I already told you all I know, Sheriff. Anybody come in to visit in this room today? Well, that's hard to say, Ranger. A lot of cattlemen in town when the auction's running. 
Well, nobody stopped by the desk, but you know how it is. Men know each other, visit around. Sure. Mm, if he'd been out tending his business like a man ought to be, he mightn't be dead. That's what I said. Now, say. Liz, I told you he was out. I saw him go. When was this? Mm, noon, a little later, maybe. But I didn't see him come in again. Are you sure it was Boland you saw? Might have been somebody dressed like him, wearing his clothes, maybe. Oh, no, I saw him good enough to know for sure. Stopped just a few feet from the desk to wipe his eyeglasses with a handkerchief. Eyeglasses? Is something mm-hmm. wrong with that, Jeez? I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, he wear glasses all the time? Mm, every time I yeah, see him, sure he did. did. I see. When you opened this door, most of the body was hidden by the bed, wasn't it? Yeah. That's right. Well, the bed's been moved since then. I think you better come in and identify the body. Oh, do we have to? Yeah, I'm afraid it's necessary. Because the man in here didn't wear glasses. Oh. Come on. Well, okay. Now, look, he, uh, he wouldn't have to be wearing them when he was killed, Jay. He never wore them. A man who wears glasses all the time has little pressure marks alongside the bridge of his nose. It's a thing we always look for. Helps with identification. Now, I'll move the sheet. All mm-hmm. right. What? Well, that ain't Mr. Boland. No, it ain't. Well, then who is this fella? Well, Sheriff, I don't know. I, I never saw him before. He, he's a lot different. Mr. Boland not only wore glasses, he had a mustache. Mm-hmm. And this fella don't. This couldn't be him clean-shaven? No, sir, could not. Looks like Boland isn't our victim, Sheriff. Looks like he's the killer. <laughs> made some photos of the dead man, got a quick developing job done, then headed for Lone Star, the town Boland had given us his address. On the way, I called my headquarters and asked to have Ranger Steve Clark meet me there. He was waiting at the county courthouse when I drove up. Howdy, Jason. Howdy, Steve. Been waiting long? No, just got here about a half hour ago. Say, what's up? Headquarters fill you in on the killing of the Alamo Hotel in Limpia? Yeah, they told me about it. Good. How far out's the Boland Ranch? Well, it begins nine miles southwest. What do we do, go out and grab Boland? If he's around, but it isn't likely. Not after checking out of that hotel and leaving a dead man in his room. Why'd you head this way, then? Well, nobody at Limpia had seen the dead man before. We gotta find out who he is. If there was bad blood between him and Boland, somebody around here might know about it. That's a good thought. I'll load my horse in with yours, and we can go out to the ranch and wake him up. Boland Ranch was plenty big, spreading and sprawling out south of the main highway. But the ranch house was deserted except for a Mexican woman. She was frightened and wouldn't unlatch the screen door. We just want to talk to you, ma'am. Go That's away, all. go away. You come back again when Mr. Boland is here. We're Texas Rangers. We just want some information from you. I know nothing, please. You go away. If Mr. Boland is in there, we'd like to talk to him. No one is here, senor. No one but me. It won't do you any good to hide him, ma'am. If he's not there, why can't we come in and look around? No. We should have gotten the search warrant, James. Nah, she's just frightened because she's alone. There ought to be somebody else around a ranch this size. Boland must have hands. Yeah. Uh, where are the men, senora? The vaqueros who work on the ranch. Round up. All out to work. They round up. All right, senor. You can go back to bed. We'll go talk to them. <laughs> Your senora wasn't really too happy to see you, boy. I know. Well, let's get the horses out of the trailer. Yeah. You really want to look for those cow folks tonight? Yeah, because we got plenty of other things to do in the morning. Come on, Charco. All right, boy. Come on. What's on your mind for the morning? Find out where Boland banks, watch his account so we can trace him if he cashes a check any place. Hey, it'll make it tougher for him yeah. to hide, all right. That's how I want to make it. Tough. Well, let's ride. Yeah. Get up, Charlie. Get up. Get up. Ha, ha. Boland had plenty of stock, all right. We passed cows and calves by the score. But ground marks showed that the main herds, the selling beef, were driving south. Railroad runs to the south, Jase. Guess they're moving them that way for shipping. Figures. That's why we had to ride so far. Yeah, it must make, take them three or four days to cut out the steers and drive them to a main camp. We ought to be spotting some riders soon. Trail marks have been getting fresher. And if we don't, we're going to have to rest these ponies. We've been knocking on them steady now for about That's three... That's all right. We're getting yeah. close. They can rest soon. Look. Where? Oh, yeah. Mace over there in the moonlight. Look down at the base. On the east end. Yeah, campfire. Come on, Charlie. Come on, boy. Get out. 
see the stock now, only part of the herd from the looks of it. Probably got a few folks working each section, driving into the railhead from different angles. They can drive them any way they want. All I want is somebody who can identify the photographs of a dead man. Campfire there, all right, Jace. Nobody around it. That's kind of funny, isn't it? Fire must have been made by cowpokes. They gotta be around. Horses couldn't move far if they were hobbled, but there ain't any horses inside either. Nothing but part of the herd. Maybe they moved around the other side of the mesa. <coughs> whoa, whoa, Chuck. Oh, where'd that shot come from, Jace? Pump of brush and rock at the edge of the mesa. Whoa, oh, easy, boy. Easy. Oh. You fellas! Pull it. Where are you? Come up where we can see you and keep your hands high. Not while you're gunning from cover. Who are you? Ranch hands with the right to be here. That's more than you got. What are you doing on this range? We're Texas Rangers. Rangers? And after Rangers, let's get a look at you. Come on, Carl. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Come Oh, who charcoal? Oh, oh, boy. Now move out of that brush where we can see you. Okay. Come on, fella. We better get off our horses, Jace. Make too good a target for them. Yeah. Well, reckon you are rangers, all right. My name's Frank Tuller. This is Charlie Small. Never Howdy. mind the introductions, Tuller. You always throw lead at anybody riding this range? I fired over your head. Just a warning. A warning for what? It's orders, rangers. Somebody's been making off with some stock, and Boland told us to be on the lookout for strange riders. Yeah. Boland? He around? No. When'd you see him last? Just before we started out on Roundup. Tuller and I ain't seen anybody but each other for almost a week. And you don't have any idea where your boss might be. How would we know? Hey, you seem mighty anxious to find him. I am mighty anxious. Yeah, the boss in uh, some kind of trouble? He's in plenty of trouble. We'll find it out sooner or later. Yeah. He's wanted for murdering a man in a hotel in Limpia. So if you know where he is or even where he might be, you better talk up. Well, if we knew, we'd tell you right off, but we don't. You know anybody Boland's been having trouble with? Nope. No, boss never had trouble with nobody. It's a dead man who'd disagree with that if he could. Get those photos out of your saddlebag, will you, Steve? Right. Maybe you can identify the man Boland killed. Here you are, Jase. Thanks. Here, Tuller, yeah? you're too small. Huh? Take a look. What well, say? Ranger! Boland never killed this man. What makes you so sure of that? Because this is the boss. This is a picture of Boland himself. <laughs> You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, Room 114, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. We had our killer cold, knew his name, his address and he turned out to be the dead man. The case fell apart. It didn't make sense. You're sure this is a photo of Boland? (laughs) We ought to know. We've been working for him for a year ever since he come down from Wyoming and bought this spread. The desk clerk at the hotel in Limpia said he'd never seen this man before. I can't have that. But Boland was registered at that hotel for two days. The clerk said he wore eyeglasses and a mustache. Then the man he saw wasn't Henry Boland. There's something fishy about this whole thing, Jace. I can't figure why anybody... Wait a minute, Steve. Huh? You fellas said Boland thought somebody was running his stock off? Yes, yeah, right. Is his brand registered? Well, sure it is. Box B brand. Thanks. If we want any more information, we'll be out to see you later. Come on, Steve. But, Jace, we... Come on. Get mounted. Get up, Charlie. Get up. Boy. Come on. Hope you catch the men you after. Thanks. What's on your mind, Jace? What'd you ask about the missing cattle and the brand registration? Boland thought some of his cattle were missing. The registered brand stolen cattle are hard to get rid of. It wouldn't be so hard if the thief took them to an out-of-the-way auction barn like the one in Limpia and then pretended to be Boland when he sold them. Hey, Jace, that makes sense. Sure it does. That's why somebody registered the Alamo under Boland's name. Then Boland must have found out about it, went up to Limpia for his showdown, and got himself killed. That's the picture. I'll buy it, Jace, but who killed him? That's something we're going to have to find out. But whoever it was, it was somebody Boland knew. Or he wouldn't have been able to follow him to that hotel room. Then if the cattle were stolen from here by somebody Boland knew, and Boland hasn't been here very long, the thief might have been one of his own ranch hands. 
We'll play it that way, Steve. Let's stick around here and see if we can find a poke with a mustache and eyeglasses. During the next morning, we spotted a pair of riders and asked if they knew of a hand with a mustache and glasses. There was such a man on the ranch, and they told us what general direction he might be working in. A couple of hours later, we found him alone, pushing some strays out of a blind draw. That's him, Jase. Just saw the sun reflect on his glasses. Let's go. Get up, Charlie. Yeah, boy. You! Stay right where you are. Don't move for that rifle holster. What's the matter, Ranger? What are you doing out here? Ooh. We'll ask the questions. Mustache, too, Jase. Yeah. Just sit tight on that horse until I get your rifle. Now, look, Ranger. When you come riding down on me like I've done something and grab my gun, I reckon I've got a right to know what it's all about. You been at the Alamo Hotel in Limpia recently? Never been in Limpia in my whole life. Where you been for the past four days? Right here on this range, working. Anybody with you? No, just me. How come? The other hands are working in twos and threes. Well, I ain't. I've been working through this Badland Strip. No herding here. Nothing but a few strays a one man can dig out. That's how it come. Anybody seen you here in the last couple of days? How could anybody see me? I've been way back in that scrub canyon. Yeah. If nobody saw you there, nobody'd see you if you weren't there either. What's your name? Dave Booden. Booden, huh? All right, you better come with us. Come with you? For what? I ain't coming any place. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Somebody murdered your boss, Henry Boland, up in Limpia yesterday. Murdered Hank Boland? That's right. The description of the killer fits you. What? Well, you're crazy. I, I've been right here, I tell you. Tell me anything you want. But you're coming to Limpia. I want a couple of people to get a look at you. We got back to the car and drove Dave Booden to the sheriff's office in Limpia to see if he could be identified. Ranger, I'm telling you, I ain't never been near this town. If you haven't been here, you got nothing to worry about. Did you send for the chambermaid and the desk clerk, Sheriff? Yeah, yeah, they'll be here right off. Thanks. As a matter of fact, here they come now, up the outside steps. Uh, see them through the window? Yeah. Ranger, I'm telling you... You better I... not say anything just now, Booden. Come in. Howdy. 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 Uh, reckon you remember the ranger here? Mm, ain't likely we'd forget him after seeing him only yesterday. Uh, Liz, Mr. Bixby, I want you to meet Mr. Booden. Hot. Howdy. 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 Doesn't seem like you've ever met Mr. Booden before. I thought maybe you had. Mm, no. Nope. Can't say I ever had the pleasure. Mm, me neither. Although for a minute he did look like... Like who? Now listen, lady, you never... Quiet, well, Booden. Lines, what's everybody getting excited about? I was just going to say he looked like Sarah Leamy's old beau, the one that run off when everybody expected they was going to get married. <laughs> oh, right, Liz. Oh, right. Thanks, Liz, Mr. Bixby. We just wanted to be sure that this man wasn't the one who was registered under the name of Henry Boland. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, no, uh -huh. nothing like him. Except for the eyeglasses and the mustache. Yeah, I guess we might as well let these folks go back to the hotel, Jason. Yeah, looks like you were telling the truth, Booden. I'm sorry. No harm done, Ranger. No way you could have known. Uh, Jace, I've been thinking. You suppose a mustache and eyeglasses might have been uh, disguised to throw us off? That's a thought, Sheriff. It's been done before. Well, that ain't the way it was this time, Ranger. Why not, Bixby? Well, them glasses may have been fake, but not the mustache. Man, you're after had a real mustache. I know, because cause I seen him in the barber shop, and the barber trimmed it. We put Budin on the bus to Lone Star and sent him back to the Boland Ranch. Clark and I spent the next day questioning everybody in Limpia. The crew at the auction barn, cattlemen, everybody. They couldn't add a thing to what we already knew. When we got back to the sheriff's office, there was more bad news. I had a call from your headquarters at Austin, Jays. They checked those prints the lab crew lifted from 114. Whoever left them had no record. Yeah, that does it. I still think it must have been somebody from Boland's ranch. Somebody he knew. That's what we think, and that's the way it looks. But let's face it, Jace. Could have been a stranger stole the cattle. Boland found out about it, went in for a showdown like any hothead, and got himself killed. Killer could have come in from any direction and left in any direction. Yeah, that's right, Jeez. No way you're telling. Come in. How day, Sheriff. Rangers. Yeah. Something we can do for you? Well, my name is Denning. I drive a line haul for interstate trucking. Route between New Orleans and El Paso. I think I got some information you might want. Leastwise, I thought so over at the Alamo Hotel. What kind of information? This. 
Key to room 114, animal. Where'd you get this? Well, sir, it was nightfall last. Night of the day Bolton was killed, Jase. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, sir. My relief man was driving. We made a coffee stop, placed about 40 miles this side Lone Star. Pulled a truck in the side of the service station there. I was sleeping and didn't want no coffee, so I stayed in the cab and dozed while a relief man went inside. I got it. Go on. Well, cattle truck pulled in for gas. Well, empty. Empty cattle truck, huh? Headed which way? Southwest. Toward Lone Star. You notice the license? Well, no, no, but there was a mark on the side box with a B in the middle of it. Boland's Box B brand, Jase. Must have been the truck used to haul the stolen cattle up here. Yeah, and to haul the killer back to the ranch. Uh, what about the key? I was coming to that. Uh, fell in the cattle truck. He paid for the gas. I didn't see him too good. Uh, I was just sort of slumped in my cab. You know, half groggy. Not exactly watching him, but seeing. I know what you mean. Well, when he fished the money out of his pocket, I saw him kind of look at something. He dug out with it. Then he sort of looked around like he was looking for some place to throw it. Station man left him to go inside for change. Then the fellow walked right past my truck real quick. He didn't see me, of course, because the cab was dark, and I heard him throw something. Make kind of a clink. Then he went back to the cattle rig and drove off. Is this what it threw away, this hotel key here? That's it. I found it when my partner came out. We went back to check the top and the tailgate, and I sort of looked around and found the key with my flash. How come you didn't just drop it in a mailbox? Well, we had a lot of stops along the line, loading, unloading. And the route came right through here. Thought I'd stop in and just drop it off. Information help you any? It sure does. Thanks. My headquarters will see to it your boss hears about it, too. Sheriff, better take down his statement. Okay, jeez. Come on, Steve. Right. See you later. All right, jeez. Heading back for Lone Star? As fast as the wheels will turn. Pile in. Yeah. How are we going to narrow it down, Jase? Boudin was the only hand with a mustache and the glasses, and he's clear. Glasses still could have been phony. Some the killer wore only while he was in Limpia. Well, we know the mustache wasn't a phony. Boland's hands have been on Roundup for a couple of weeks. A lot of them let their beards grow. Would have been a simple matter to shave the beard and leave a lip cover. Sneak away with a load of cattle and then shave clean before he got back. I know, I know, but Boudin was the only hand working alone. One of the others did it and disappeared for a few days. His sidekick know about it. Doesn't have to be a one-man job, Steve. A sidekick could be in on it, too. Yeah, that figures. Well, what's our play, Jase? Fingerprint them all and get a check on the prints up at Austin? I think we can wrap it up quicker than that. We know the killer doesn't have a beard now and uses a straight razor. That was the murder weapon. Yeah. Boudin can tell us which of the men shave with straight razors, and once we know that, we can settle the rest with a camera I got in the car trunk. How? By asking the straight razor men if they'd like to pose for a couple of identification pictures with eyeglasses and a phony mustache. Tell them we'll have to hold them until the pictures are seen by a couple of witnesses in Limpia. That ought to flush some action from them. Action? I'm betting the man who killed Boland will raise more fuss than the alligator when the lake went dry. I got back to Lone Star just in time. The bank had taken over the management of Boland's ranch as executors, and the roundup was just about complete. Last, the herd was being driven into the stock pens near the railroad siding when we reached the south end of the ranch. There's Booten, Jase. Take care of the horses over there by the corral. Yeah. Come on. Hey, Booten. Hey, Booten. Yes? I want to talk to you a minute. Oh, hello, Rita. How are you making out? I will make out fine if you will help. Pretty sure it was somebody on the ranch who killed your boss. Well, how can I help you? Just tell me which of the pokes use straight razors for shaving. Hmm. Well, let's see. Is Jones and Tuller and Happy? Tuller, huh? Say, Jase, isn't he the bright boy that fired on us first time we rode out on the range? He's the one, all right. He was clean shaven, too. The feller with him was named Small. You know where they are, Boudin? Well, it was over there a minute ago, driving the last... Oh, oh, here they come now, Jase. Around the end of the corral with their horses. Hey, you better drift away, Boudin. Sure thing. Well, howdy, Rangers. Back again? Yeah. I'd like to have another talk with you, Tuller. You too, Small. Sure, Ranger. What's it about? Make your way till you dismount. Right. Well, well, what do you want? Yeah. Find out who killed Bolin? We're pretty sure it's one of the hands. All you fellas without beards are going in with us. Uh, what for? Why? Yeah. What would that prove? Prove plenty when we get what we want. Take photos of all of you with prop eyeglasses and mustache on you. 
couple of people in Limpia want to see him. Well, if they think they recognize somebody, that ain't legal evidence. We'll have something to help it along. We'll fingerprint the man they think they saw what? because Boland's killer left his prints all over that hotel room. Ranger, it warned me. Shut up. Huh? I helped steal the cattle, that's all. I didn't go to Olympia. He did. I told you to shut up, you rat. All right, Tuller. You can both. Get out, ah. Tuller lashed his horse and dove behind the other mounts at the rack. The frightened animal reared over us, knocked Small into me before Clark could grab the bridle. Oh, keep your eye on Small, Steve. I'm going after Tuller. He jumped the fence into the cattle chute, Ranger. Don't let a man push him in there, Jake. I'll climb up and get him from above. Look out. Stay flat up there, Ranger. I can see you better than you can see me. You got yourself in a trap, Color. Yeah? I'll have you and wanted to come down after me. I don't have to come down after you. You're a dead pigeon in that cattle chute. <laughs> don't you believe it, Ranger? No? That shot you fired's already got the cattle stirred up. Hey, you men down in the pen. Go, yeah, go. Open the gate so the herd can move into the chute. All right, Ranger. Go! Give me more cover! Yeah, cover you won't like. If they open that gate and I fire into the herd, they'll run you down. You'll get trapped to death. All right, boys, open up the gate. I'm not fooling, Teller. I'll fire into them. No, 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 I come on, I come on. Here's my gun. All right, and climb up on the fence. All right, Ranger. All right, I'm coming. Now, here, give me your arm. I'll pull you out of there. Good, Ranger. Okay. Don't, don't let me drop now. I, 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 don't, I don't want to make no trouble, Ranger. I made a mistake. I admit it. You made a big mistake, Tuller. Too bad you didn't use that razor strictly for shaving. Go on. his part in the crime, Charles Small received a sentence of 25 years. Frank Teller was tried and convicted for the murder of rancher Henry Bolin. Today, after two decades, he still serves his sentence. Life imprisonment. Here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. Reflecting on the old-time One Riot, One Ranger reputation of the Texas Rangers, a visitor to Texas recently mentioned to a ranger that he'd been noticing a number of current press reports where two rangers had participated in the quelling of a riot or investigation of a crime. After citing this observance to the ranger, the man asked, how come two men are being assigned to some of these cases now? Are the rangers less effective than they used to be? The lanky ranger shook his head. Oh, no, he said. One ranger is still sufficient to handle the situation, all right, but in these days of complex legal technicalities, we've been sending two of them along. One to take care of what trouble there is, and the other one to serve as a sort of a disinterested witness. <laughs> Good night, folks. See you next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the MGM production Stars in My Crown. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Ann Diamond, Herb Bygren, Peggy Weber, Tom McKee, Bill Johnstone, Herb Ellis, and Barney Phillips. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Monday chimes mean the best in music on NBC. Tomorrow night, Gordon McRae stars in the Railroad Hour presentation of the operetta The Firefly. The NBC Symphony presents a one-hour concert featuring works by Vivaldi, Wagner, and Stravinsky. Tomorrow's NBC Symphony concert marks the first in a series under the baton of the widely acclaimed young conductor Guido Cantelli. Now the $64 question. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.